All right. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for the 17th day of April, 2019. Well, we just got back from the walk, and I debated washing my hair before doing this. There, uh, We have, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of chemtrails in our skies all the time. Uh, it's rare when we have clear skies here. And right now... Uh, there's all kinds of designs up there. I uh, took a little video on my phone and I tried to upload it here, but I wasn't able to do it. They're saying, yeah, that's not the right file type. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. Maybe I can bring it into this software or something and save it differently. And and uh, maybe I can upload it this way, but I don't know. Anyhow, I wasn't able to just get a picture that showed all of it. I had to actually do a video so you could see it. You know, it's a mess and I, it, it, it gums up my hair. My, my husband says it makes his feel like straw when it gets in it. Uh, it. It can't be healthy because it's like, what is it like barium and aluminum and all kinds of stuff. I, I don't, for some reason, they think that if they spray things up there that it's not going to fall down on us. It's going to dissipate. Well, it doesn't dissipate. It, 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 I mean, maybe some of it does but it doesn't all and it can't be healthy and how come we don't know about it how come nobody from the government has come out and said hey you know what this is what we're doing all those lines in the sky no it's not vapor trails no <laughs> it's actually us we're spraying things in the sky and here's why we're doing it assuming you could trust what they say so anyhow because anymore, after the last couple of years, I don't trust anything anymore. Nothing. Well, today is an eight energy, being the 17th day. So it's an eight energy, and that's that's even greater higher self-involvement, you know, to where you're aware that you're not the only person in the world, that there's other people out there, too. It's about strength and leadership skills and, and just being able to see the bigger picture. So maybe you can utilize that today if, if something should arise where you're like, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> Need to maybe step back and take a broader look at things. It might not be just exactly what's in front of your face. So anyhow, uh, let's get started. And uh, before my hair sticks to my face and, you know, <laughs> I'm on a time limit here. The chemtrails, it takes a little bit before it starts really doing things to my hair. But after a couple of hours, it's just, it's like, it's like if you grow up with oily hair, you know that if you don't wash it every day, you have an oil slick there. Well, it kind of hangs like that, only it isn't that. It's different. It is definitely in my hair. And it's just, it's awful. <laughs> Anyhow, let's take the first card and see see what it has to say today. And if you haven't been here before, welcome. If you have, thank you so much for coming back. If you have come back, then you know that I take the 13th card each time so to make things really random. And then after that, we're going to take a look at a room. The first card I've drawn here is the Four of Swords. Lately, we've been drawing a lot of pentacles, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, but here, we're letting our mind take a rest. We're, uh, you can see he, he's not dead. He's just laying there. He's taking a nap or something. And he's basically allowing, you see the four swords, three above and one down below. He needs things to settle. You know, he, maybe, maybe a lot's coming in on us today and, and or has been. We just need to have a chance to maybe sort things out. Just take a time out, take some time away and, and just stay out of, you know, stay away from people. Just take a moment to yourself to kind of think about what's going on in your life or whatever. You know, if there's something that's happening that you need to think about and, Maybe give some attention to. Uh, that's what the Four of Swords is really uh, talking about. It's about respite. It's about taking time out to heal the mind and just letting thoughts settle. You know, you're likely in a, in, a, in a place right now where maybe a decision has to be made and you're just not really sure. And so, you know, maybe just spending a little time with higher self, letting higher self inform the process 
you know, maybe that's really where you need to be right now. But let's do another card and see if we can get a little more information about what this is talking about. Well, we have the Queen of Cups. You can see she's sitting next to the water's edge with her lovely throne. You see cherubs all over it. Cups is the water element. You see her, it's, it's, this is uh, the type of cup that she's uh, holding. And I used to know the name of it. Oh, gosh, I wanna say it starts with, a, with an O, but I'm not sure. I have another deck that is, and I can't even think of the name of it. It was a, it was a special edition deck by, done by, I think, an Italian designer. And I'll have to get it out for you. But they use this same type of cup. And so it's really indicative of the type of chalices. You see the typical ones, you know, which looks like the normal chalice. Um, and that's typical in, in irrespective of, of the decks. You're going to see something that vaguely resembles the Holy Grail, basically. Uh, but then there's this. And it, it basically denotes a little bit greater status, maybe. But you see her lovely crown there. Let's see if we can get close enough here so you can see as much of the detail of this card. The queens are just beautiful in this deck. But she's about emotion and compassion and uh, benevolence and generosity. She can, she can be, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, if, if she's overreacting or something, then, then maybe she can jump to conclusions or whatever and, and react emotionally. But typically the Queen of Cups is very peaceful, very loving. She's the, she, the Queens are the mother within, the mother aspect within. So as, a, and, and I'm not talking necessarily about someone who's had children. It, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that. It means when you're talking about the mother aspect, you're talking maiden, mother, and crone. So it's the time of life, basically. She's of the age. She's the old. She's an older woman. She's not the young woman or the young person in the page or the princess card uh, of that of that part of the court cards. But the queen is going to be an older woman, uh, and again, the qualities of her will be benevolent and compassionate and loving. Um, she's she's emotionally typically emotionally present for other people. Uh, when ill-dignified, Ill though, you know, she could be caught up in herself and, and reactive and, and emotionally out of balance. So, but typically, uh, she's someone that, that uh, understands the emotional side of life very well and, and knows how to balance the energy of the king. We see it in, in uh, some decks you'll see when you look at the emperor and the empress card, sometimes the emperor is looking direct on. I think that's the case in this, if I remember right, the emperor is either looking at us or maybe slightly off. But sometimes in some of them, they're looking, the, the emperor is looking back at the, if you, if you lay them side by side, side by side, it looks like he's looking back at the empress. Um, guidance always comes from the woman. And I know that we think it's the opposite, that, you know, we have to go to the man for all the advice, to the father figure for advice. But in truth, it's mom. It's mom that has that holds the biggest picture of everything. It's mom that is thinking about the family. It's mom that's thinking about the greater aspect of everything. It's just within our nature to do that. Whereas uh, the male energy is more direct and more purposeful and out there getting things done. You know, so when we're expressing that type of energy, that's what we're doing. It's an, an initiative. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's basically Aries energy, which is what we're in right now. Uh, although the moon is in Libra. I did put that up. <laughs> I did write it up. It's on the blog. So if you're interested, check that out. I missed two of them because I was outside digging in the garden. So I, I don't know. I just forgot myself and, and uh, didn't write. But uh, anyhow. I, I, it's a rather long one, so I think anyway, it was seen long when I was doing it, but uh, anyhow, that's up, but, uh, but yeah, the Queen of Cups is, uh, she's a lovely woman, and she's very kind and caring and compassionate, and, and uh, I'm not sure yet what it has to do with the four, although uh, 
numerologically, if we were to assign a number to the court cards, which we don't, it would be 11, 12, 13, and 14. And so the queen would be the 13, which reduces to four, and, we, and that's in synchrony, synchronicity with the uh, uh, four here of swords. And then the eight, of course, for today, that energy is the double of that. So that's so this is all contained within the eight, really. Or we could even look at it that the that these two essential four cards is what they essentially are, uh, add together to create that eight. But let's do a third card. Well, we have uh, the Six of Cups, which is shared abundance. I love this card. I love it in any deck, but I love it in this one. Look at that. We see every cup that she's offering, every chalice she's offering to, to uh, it looks like children. Although, although the smaller woman could be an older woman, she's got white hair. But I've always seen this just as two young people. And she's offering uh, a cup. And so you can see, you can see that the chalices have, have uh, various, uh, uh, looks like various plants. Maybe it's like a bouquet of some kind. But each one has a five-pointed white flower symbolizing purity, the purity of shared abundance with others. You see the X right here? You see that X right right there? <laughs> Hard for me to do things backwards. Um, now, I interpret that, and I don't know if this was the intention um, when, when, when Pamela Coleman-Smith drew these cards. I don't know if she was considering runes in this. It was likely just a design, but, but Gebo is shaped like that, is an X. And Gebo, of course, is the seventh rune of the Elder Futhark. Um, and basically what that is is balanced energy exchange. And that's really what we're talking about here. The sixth energy is really about higher self-awareness. And, and, and again, with, with eight being the energy of today, what we're doing is we're, we're progressing into from six to eight to the greater awareness of, of, of self in others, basically, that we are not alone in this existence, that everyone else is doing the same thing we are. And we're part of that shared collective consciousness. Um, and here, you know, we have, we have an expression of shared abundance. This may be, I'm going to draw another card. I was going to go ahead and do the room, but I'm going to do a fourth card because I'm still not really, unless we're thinking, unless we're thinking about benevolence. Sometimes I'm still going to do a fourth card here, but you know, sometimes we get out of, out of touch with the air element within, with our intellect. You know, sometimes we're too much in our head. We're too rational, too, too this, too that. We need too much proof. We don't, we don't go according to our intuition. We don't listen to that inner voice. Um, and it could be that the four of swords, as this person is laying there, letting thoughts settle, trying to figure things out and, and come to some kind of understanding about whatever's happening there. Um, either they've been through it with someone or some or, or a group of someone's. And maybe they didn't feel very cared about. And maybe we're thinking about well, or maybe we behaved in a way that wasn't the best. And maybe we're rethinking that. Maybe we need to get input from an older woman, a mother figure, or just a trusted, you know, older, older female in our lives. Maybe we need to do that. Maybe we could seek counsel from that person. But generally speaking, when the next card is about shared abundance with others, 
then maybe we lost sight of it. Maybe we lost sight of our collective consciousness, our collective presence together and how integrated we are with one another. And, you know, maybe we need to go in a different direction. Let's do one more card though and see if it gives us any insight at all. But either, you know, he's considering another another way to consider something, you know, maybe from a more emotional standpoint, you know, one of extending oneself to others versus, you know, maybe just thinking about the self. Because on an eight energy day, that's really what you're doing. Maybe he's laying there thinking about his life's purpose. There's our fourth card. It's an eight, isn't it? For today. Strength. It's the power of the goddess within. Primal self versus spirit. We see the lemnus gate or the figure eight above her head. She's not, I mean, you can think of it as taming the beast within, but in reality, that's really not what she's doing. This is a meeting of the wild primal self to the true, you know, nature of spirit. It's embracing the dark and light. It's embracing one another and loving that side of self that maybe, maybe we're not so proud of, but understanding that whatever issues we might have that we express maybe in a way that might not be as, you know, compassionate as we might, it's a place that we're working on, hopefully. And it's a place where spirit can inform that whole process. But whereas the, the lemnus gate is, is about the continuous cycle, right, of life. But, but what we're doing here is a continual cycle. It, whether you're talking about the polarity within, you know, the masculine and feminine side of self. You could say the lion represents the masculine side and the, the woman represents the goddess or the feminine side within. You could see it as spirit versus ego, higher self versus form. You, you can see, so you can see polarity in different ways. You can see it on the vertical plane and on the horizontal plane. On the horizontal plane, it would be, you know, uh, ego. You're talking ego. On the vertical plane, you're talking spirit. And so it's an as above, so below uh, experience re really here. But it's the strength in within to acknowledge both aspects and to make peace with it and to find a way to integrate it. I, I mean, the woman representing spirit, of course, is definitely controlling the lion here. But the lion is a willing participant. So it perhaps what has happened here is that we've had a moment or a series of moments, likely, where head and heart have been at odds with one another, where maybe we expressed ourselves in a way that that wasn't the best and we lacked compassion perhaps and so maybe we saw what that did maybe we saw the effect it had and if so maybe we decided to take some time out and just think about it you know and 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 think about well how could i have done that differently how could i have expressed compassion when maybe i i held back you know maybe i i wasn't harmful in my words, but maybe I wasn't as compassionate as I could have been either. To be able to express love and compassion and humility in the face of other people who either aren't happy with you or who, or who are maybe in need and you don't rise to the occasion, it's because you don't really see yourself as part of the greater group. You know, you don't see how it's all integrative, that we all have a, I mean, you throw the little pebble in the pond and you see the ripple effect outwards. It's no different. 
we are that pebble. We, we, we throw anything out there, it's going to have an effect somehow, some way, somewhere. No matter, you, you may think it's nothing, but somebody could be affected by it. You know, so we all have to be com- conscious of how we come across to others, whether or not we're leaving people wanting or whether we're leaving people fulfilled. And maybe we've had a situation where either it's happened to us or we've done that just without thinking probably, you know, and now maybe we've seen the effect of that. And maybe we're starting to reconsider and say, you know, it's okay to extend myself to other people. It's okay to extend love and compassion and unity toward others. It's okay to be compassionate and be concerned about what someone else is going through. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength isn't it? Let's draw a rune though and see if we can see a little more synchronicity here. I'm glad I drew the fourth card because this is really aligning with today. I think we, we're seeing a lot of expressions in our, our country, particularly, and around the world. Uh, I mean, Notre Dame burning. I mean, it's still there, I, I, and, and things are still there. And I, I just, I, I'm just, I'm amazed, you know. It was, it was a, such a tragedy. It, it's more than a cathedral. I mean, it's an icon. It's an archetype. It's... It's more than just, I don't know, it's just more, you know, it's for everyone. So when something like this happens, it's just so shocking. But I drew Yura. And Yura is the 12th rune of the Elder Futhark. Uh, It's a three energy. So manifestation, catalyst, uh, mind, body, spirit alignment, maiden, mother, crone, triplicities, triple aspects, all of that is involved in the three. but here we, again, have as above, so below energy, don't we? We see Ken as forward and reversed. So you're talking spirit within, expressed within and without, basically. But enlightenment, illumination, but it's moving. It's constantly moving, informing the process we're look we're always in this process of manifestation i know it looks like we're here and everything is solid and everything seems stable and everything's in stasis but it isn't everything is being created at every given second okay everything is being created at every given second i mean can you see the opportunity nothing has to remain the same because it isn't if it is it's remaining so by choice only Maybe collective choice, maybe just your choice, but it's remaining there by choice. Maybe there's a greater thing going on. Maybe a greater message is being learned. But trust me, it's all being created at every given second we exist. So we're not just hanging out. We're creating. So we got to be mindful of what that is. Now, in this case, obviously, we're discovering that there's strength in spirit, that there's strength in love, there's strength in compassion. And Yura, you know, being an earth element, uh, I believe it's an earth element rune. Let me double check that, though. Um, where's my grimoire here? I'm pretty sure it's an earth element rune. I included in a, in a I've talked about this garden binary, and I keep meaning to show it to you guys. Um, I included in that. Um, it's good for, for garden and harvest and fertility and all of that. But, yeah, it's an earth element. Um, but it basically speeds growth. It, it's the rune of transformation and balance. It, it basically means year. So right away, you're looking at cycles or the wheel of the year, uh, but it promotes change for the better and all of that. So it seems to me, it just feels like we've done something or been involved in something or we've witnessed something or something that wasn't as compassionate as we needed to be. And we've just come to a realization that there's strength in that. And, and we can do that. And it's fine that we can help other people. We can be present for other people because it may not even be that we're handing, you know, cups with flowers, you know, like the, like, like these two people are doing here in the six of cups. It may not even be anything tangible. It may just simply be offering our time and our presence in someone's life who may need it. 
you know, maybe we've been made some harsh decisions or something about maybe a family member or a friend or something. Uh, and maybe we're, we're, we're not feeling, you know, like we want to be around them. But maybe it's not anything that they've done. Or if they have, maybe they were just, it was a bad day or they were just being human or something. You know, we all make mistakes. But maybe we judge somebody harshly. That's the other part of, of, of swords. It's about judgment. And are we being too judgmental? And so maybe we were, and maybe we've taken some time out to think about things, let the thoughts settle. And maybe we're trying to have a more compassionate view towards somebody. You know, there's strength in forgiveness. You know, The Course in Miracles is, a, is an interesting uh, text. It's, a, it's a, a channeled text. It was, it was automatic writing, essentially. She could, Helen Shuckman was the, uh, uh, was the scribe, basically, and she, she could pick it up whenever she wanted to. The voice was just there, and she was just transcribing everything the voice said. She, I think she, I think she, well, she was a psychiatrist, I guess, she was a psychiatry professor, a psychology professor, uh, at uh, in this in that department at uh, I think Columbia, I think, and uh, if I remember right. But uh, anyway, um, the idea was that we need to rethink who we are. It was basically written for Christians so that as, as sort of a reinterpretation of some of the concepts that they find in the New Testament, uh, things like atonement and forgiveness and miracles and all of that were, were redefined in a way that, at least for me, made more sense. I'm not Christian, so I, although, although I have attended church in my life, and I've, and I've definitely read the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, but I've always been a witch, so I, I'm not really... Um, I never really called myself a Christian ever, even though I suppose technically I grew up in that household, although my parents were not religious. So, but if you asked, then my father would say we were Baptist. We weren't, but he grew up a Baptist. So my mother grew up in a, in a family where her mother was from Ireland and she was Roman Catholic and her father was Christian science. So there was no active uh, religious anything in their home, really, other than, you know, mom and dad's own beliefs, basically. So, um, but I guess, you know, the idea about redefining things, in a sense, that's what we're doing in the Four of Swords. And when we understand that who we truly are is spirit, that everything that he, that is here, it's like when I said everything is 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 created at every given second. It's because it is. We're all deciding what this is all going to look like at every given moment of our lives. So it can look great or it can look challenging. I mean, whatever we decide to experience together in spirit, there's no judgment as to good or bad. You see, it's just something to experience. It's when we get here that it's like, oh my God, what did I just do? You know. Or what was just done to me is like, oh, my God, you know, so so we attach the judgment and the feeling and all of that. We make all these decisions that are reactive instead of creative. And so you can see how things get right. I mean, you can understand how it could get this way. When we forget that we're truly spirit and, and, and controlling that process a whole lot more than we think we can. So. Um, But I think that this is really about transforming something about way, the way we've, we're thinking, the way we're perceiving into a place that's, that's more compassionate and loving. So if we're in a situation maybe with somebody, and I'm, I'm thinking that's really what this is, um, that this is about a relationship maybe that isn't, you know, doing very well, maybe it's time to just stop and take a step back and Observe the process with source vision instead of ego vision and see a brother instead of the other and find your humanity with that person again because it is collective in nature. This person you might be upset with or a group of people you might be uncomfortable with or whatever this is describing for you. All you're really seeing is the other side of self. So if it's something that's happening you don't like, 
maybe you decided before incarnating that, hey, you know what? I want to experience that. I want to see what that feels like. I mean, you know, you'd never make that choice here, of course, even though you really are. But you would never consciously do that, right? You're not going to invite problems, right? Well, some of us do, but, but, uh, but still, just take a step back and understand that, you know, this, there could be a greater uh, uh, message here, a message of spirit that we're just trying to learn. So learn it and let it go, you know, come back together, find the unity, find the love, find the compassion, find the connectedness that you've lost by making this choice to either be angry at someone or to separate from them or, or to not be forgiving, to be too judgmental, to not just look at it as a little speed bump, one of those little parking lot ones, you know, you got to kind of go over a little slowly. So nothing breaks. Yeah. But then we get into the reactive place and pretty soon we're breaking all over the place, aren't we? So anyhow, well, that's kind of cool. Well, I guess we've gone long enough, 30 minutes, 30, almost 31. Yep, we're at 31 now. Okay, well, <laughs> I try to keep these between 20 and 30. I, I figure that's long enough. Uh, but sometimes I get to chatting and so, you know, anyhow. Well, cool. That's kind of an interesting reading. Finding strength and compassion and love. Coming back together, reevaluating things. Yeah, we're going to have to do that in this country, aren't we? Tomorrow's Muller Thursday. Not that we're going to learn anything, but, you know, not that we're going to learn anything we don't already know. So... Sometimes I think these slow rollouts are by design so that people don't really get the big picture of what really happened. And so they tend to manage the outrage. Unfortunately, the majority of the people in this country are so outraged, I don't think they're going to be able to manage anything. So it's hard to see how we come out of all of this. It really is intact and, and loving toward one another. It's hard to see it right now. I, I know that we'll get there. We will. We'll have to. Yeah, we don't have a choice, but it will be hard. I know that it will. And uh, maybe everybody just does, needs to do the Course in Miracles so you can understand a little bit more about forgiveness and what we're really doing. Because here's the thing. If all this is an illusion that we're just creating to learn something, then it should be easy to let it go when the lesson's learned. It should be. Forgiveness is really about forgiving that we forgiving ourselves that we ever believed it was real to begin with. Yeah, ponder that one. I have for a lot a lot of years it's like forgiving myself for ever believing the illusion was real to begin with. The basic premise of the course in miracles it starts out nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Think about that. And then forgive yourself for ever believing any of this was real. <laughs> Thanks so much for stopping by. We'll see you tomorrow. Be good to yourself. Be good to one another. And blessed be.